is Bailey Sutton, and thank you so much for joining us today. We're so grateful you're choosing to spend part of your week with us. I'd like to take a moment and fill you in on a few things you need to know about here at Lifehouse Fellowship. If this is your first experience with us, please go to lifehousefellowship.net and fill out our digital connect card. We'd love to know more about you and your family. To give securely with your mobile device, text LHF to the number 77977 and follow the prompts. You can also go to lifehousefellowship.net and click give, or you can mail in a gift to P.O. Box 81172, Midland, Texas 79708. Life groups are back. During this season, Connection is more important now than ever. We have brand new Life Group directories available at the Connection Center. Be sure to grab one today and get plugged in. One of the joys of the holiday season for us is celebrating Friendsgiving with our church family. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we will not be able to host Friendsgiving this season. Instead, we want to encourage you and your family to host your own Friendsgiving Plus One. You set the time, you set the place, and reach out to share a meal with those closest to you. As many of you know, in the past we've dedicated the month of November to giving back to the Jubilee Center here in Midland. Due to restrictions caused by COVID-19, we'll be partnering with West Texas Food Bank to host a virtual food drive. To give, you and your family can go to lifehousefellowship.net and select the package you wish to donate. We admire the generous nature of our church, and we will not let COVID stop us from giving back to our community. To celebrate the most wonderful time of the year, we're partnering with Shekinah Glory Ministries to perform A Christmas to Remember, a production for all ages. We invite you and your family to join us Sunday, December 13th at 10.30 a.m. or 6 p.m. We need actors and stagehands of all ages. No previous experience is required to be a part of this production, just a joyful heart and a willingness to learn. During this season of tentative planning, we want to encourage you to stay connected with us through our website, app, and our social media accounts. Hallelujah, church. Good morning, Lifehouse Fellowship Church. Are you excited to be in God's house this morning? Come on. Awesome. Can we rise up on our feet? Good to see your wonderful, beautiful faces this morning. And if you're at home, we want to say welcome to church this morning. If you can stand up on your feet, you can if you want to. Um, we want to say welcome to church on behalf of our lead pastors, Pastor Stoyan and Jeremy Sutton. We want to say welcome to church. We want to tell you that we're excited that you're able to worship with us either in person or online. And we pray that God's presence would dwell in you as we praise and we worship. I want to read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 this morning. The Bible says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. The New Living Translation says, Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. How many people are here to offer a sacrifice of praise this morning? Come on, come on. Are you here to offer a sacrifice of praise? Can you just lift up your hands to heaven this morning? Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Father, because you brought us into your house to offer a sacrifice of praise. Let our praise come to you as a sweet-smelling savor. Let it rise up to you from our lips to your ears this morning. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. Let us leave you blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Father. Come on, put your hands together. We did it last Sunday, if you can remember. Hey, you're a man of your word. Say we have this confidence. We have this confidence. I can hear you. Yeah. You finish 
If you said it, I believe it. You're a man. You're a man of your word. Your precious touch this morning. So desperately needed, Lord. In a world that is hurting and there's chaos all around us. Things that we see, things that we don't see, but we know that's happening. Distractions that are trying to pull us away. Family members going astray. Maybe difficulties in the workplace. Difficulties in marriages. God, there's a lot going on. But here's what I know as a believer. As a child of the Most High God, that your promises are yes and amen. And if your word says it, I'm going to believe it. You are a man of your word, Father God. And we thank you for your promises. And Lord, when, when all else seems like seeking sand, <laughs> your hand is not too short to save. And you're reaching down to lift your people up and out of their situations. And as your people, all we got to do is trust that you're with us and that you're there. And walk confidently that, that you are there and that you will rescue your people because you love us so much. So let us be a people that go hard after you, Father God. Let us be a people that pursue after your heart. Because when we draw close to you and we know your heart, then when times of trouble come, then we know that your promises are yes and amen, and we can trust in that. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said, amen. Amen. Turn around and wave at somebody this morning. Take a quick seat. Remain in a, an attitude of worship. This is our tithes and offering moment. If you're watching online, we want to welcome you this morning. Thank you for tuning in. There's, there's opportunities for you to give as well, and you'll see those in the subject line or on the screen. If you're here today, if you need an envelope, raise your hand, uh, and an usher will bring you an envelope uh, to place in the basket in just a moment. Last week, I talked about uh, yeast and the value of yeast in baking. And the process that, or the word that, that the Lord had given me is uh, rest. It's the waiting process of time, seed, and harvest. Now, I, wanna, I want you to understand this. There's two principles talked about in the Bible. We have tithing, which is a biblical principle that began in the Old Testament, but is still practiced in the New Testament church. And tithing is saying, I give to God from what I have received. Because I know that it's not mine, it's His. So I'm giving back to God what is His. And seeding says this. It says, I know this future event will come through God's bounty. It's not in my will, but it's in the faith that of planting the seed that I trust God. When I plant this seed and I rest and wait, I, I was talking to a friend yesterday, and he said one, <laughs> as a kid he would plant a seed, and he'd go back two or three days, Two, two days later and see that that seed hadn't done anything so he would dig it up to look and see see if anything had happened to it <laughs> I mean you know that's not what you do you got to put the seed in the ground you got to water it and let it let it do what it's supposed to do some sun will come down on it it'll eventually break through the ground amen so when you plant your seeds and whatever you're believing God for when you plant those seeds don't go don't go back there and dig it back up Trust God in the process. And that's what I said last week. Trust God in the process. When you give every week financially, just rest and know that God is watching out for you. And trust Him in the process. Amen? I, I, it's an easy principle. And if we, if we would just learn to do that and just rest, and we, we, we would have a whole lot less stress. Amen? I don't know about you, but I don't want a lot of stress. I, we don't need that. So when we trust God in the process, He gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. That means I can't comprehend all of it, but I know that I have peace in the process. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, let us 
I, I love the intuitiveness of children. I mean, they want to see, hey, what, what's this he do in underground? But as adults, Lord, we, we understand that when we sow a seed, we've got to give it time to reap a harvest. And in that process, we're trusting you. We're praying and believing you to see a miracle, to see the bounty of the seeds that were sown. So, God, we want to be obedient first in our tithing. We want to trust you, God. And we want to give back to what, what is yours. We recognize that everything that we have is because of you. It's not in our own strength. You give us the strength to do our jobs. You give us our, our hands to be able to work and our feet to be able to get to work. You give us favor to be able to get positions that you placed us in, God. It's not in our own strength. It's because of what you do for your children. And so tithing is just a part of to give back to you, Father. And we want to be obedient in that. And then the seeds that we sow, God, we want to say we trust you with every seed that we sow to reap a harvest, a bountiful harvest, God. And so I bless every giver this morning. Thank you for meeting their needs. Thank you for meeting the needs of this house. God, what a blessing and honor it is. I'm, re I'm, I'm reminded of even in that yeast process, the, the atmospheric conditions that are important for that yeast to rise. And Lord, worship creates that atmospheric condition that as we sow our seeds into good soil, it's going to reap a great harvest. Lord, we honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you as you give. Let's continue to worship this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. As we continue our worship this morning, I just wanted to sing something. You know, the next set of songs we're going to be singing, you know, I mean, we sang one of the songs before. It says refiner. Um, and there's a process that gold passes through, right? How many of us know the process that gold passes through before it is refined and becomes, you know, the jewelry we wear and stuff like that, right? It passes through the furnace. How many people will agree that everything that has happened this year is like, you know, the furnace and we've been passing through fire. I mean, some, sometimes it's been like literal, you know. Many of us have passed through stuff. We know people that have passed through stuff. With everything happening, with the division, with the coronavirus, with the economy, everything. But what just dropped to my spirit this morning is like, what have I become after passing through this furnace? Have I come out as gold, as pure as gold? Or have I melted and diminished like, you know, the other impurities that is attached to the raw gold and doesn't make it out on the other side? And as we sing the songs this morning, I want you to reflect on it and let your heart be open. That... You know, no matter how it has been this year, have I looked unto Jesus? The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Another verse of the scripture says, as we behold him, we become changed from glory to glory. If we could rise up on your feet, just, just rise up on your feet as we, as we just reflect on these things. As we sing this next set of songs, the first one says refiner, the other one says gold. Are we... And the years rounding up were just about a few weeks to the end of the year. What has become of me? What has become of my family? I mean, we know a lot of people that has, that have, you know, um, submitted to all the challenges and the pressure of the world as it is right now. And we know, I mean, some of them are our friends, some family members. As we just close our eyes in this place this morning. Let's just whisper to Jesus and just say, Father, help me. Refine me as gold. Let me come out pure. And that that thing that you're wanting to work in my life will be completed. Remember, the altars are open. You know, some of us might have to come to the altar and just lay it all on the altar and just tell him, Jesus, you're the refiner.
find me. It's right here, my life is here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. Come on, John. You're the fire, the fire. I want to be consumed. Come on. I want to be tried. Come on, it's not easy. You take whatever you See, I want to be tried by fire, pure and fine. You take whatever you desire. Come on, what's your, what's your heart? Lord, here is my life. If your glory want to come in, come on, let it Queen and I do. 
myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can hear. So come on, church. I give myself away. My life is not my own, to you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you, come on, come on Joe, let me hear you, say my life is not my own, to you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you, come on one more time. My life is not my own to me. My life is not mine. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. This might not only just be speaking to you, but concerning someone you've been trusting God for in your family, in your, in your life, and you've been trusting God for them. I want you to believe this morning and have faith that even their life is not their own. This morning, just lift up your hands. If you have such people here, just, just call their name and give their life to Christ. Just call their name and say, Father, I hand over this person to you. I hand over this person to you. I don't care what they're passing through right now, but I just hand them over to you because their life is not their own. Because their life is yours, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, lift up your voice and just make that prophetic act this morning. I lift them up to you, Jesus. I give them to you, Jesus. I don't care what the challenge is right now. But I hand over the life to you, Jesus. Yeah. just feel like as um, as Fash was saying, those that we're believing for, that their life is not their own, that we just need to sit here for a minute and we need to intercede. And so we're just going to pray for a second. How many of you have a prodigal or a lost family member that you're believing to come to Jesus? How many of you? Can you raise your hand? There's a lot of us. And I feel like there is, there's, a, there's a moment on this. And so I just feel like we need to sit here for a minute. We're going to pray. And I want you to pray as if their life depended on it. Because it does. Okay? So we're going to pray with fervency and authority. Because God's word is true. And he says if you train up a child in the way that he should go, when he's old, he will not depart from it. And so we trust that those seeds that have been sown, that they will come to fruition. So, Father, right now, we call them home. 
We call forth, Lord Jesus, those who are lost and away from you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would brood over them, that you would hover over them, that you would go into the places, Lord Jesus, where they're at and they shouldn't be, and that you would disturb them with a holy fear, a holy fear and a desire to be in your presence. Lord Jesus, that there would be a, a pain and an ache in their soul for the presence of God that you would call them back. We call them forth in the name of Jesus. We say you shall not have them saving. You will not have our children. You will not have our mothers and our fathers and our brothers and sisters. We call them home. We call them home. Holy Spirit, brew over them. Hover over them. In the name of Jesus, we declare it to be so. Hallelujah. We thank you they're coming home. We thank you, Father. We thank you for it, Jesus. the angels of the Lord are working on our behalf this morning <laughs> and distance is no barrier wherever they are wherever they are that you're working on them right now that you purify them you purify us as gold thank you father Woo! come on let's just bask in that for a few more seconds this morning come on just basking it for a few more seconds. The spirit of intercession is just over the house this morning. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
trust you, Jesus. Chains are breaking. We bless you, Jesus. There's a spirit of intercession that's at this service. So what I want to do is, is I want my, uh, the people that have been in church for a long time. How many of y'all been in the church? Anybody been here in church over 25 years, 20, 25 years? Would you raise your hand? I want you to go grab somebody by their hand. I want you to teach them how to pray. If you, if you, if you are in, been in the faith for 15, 20, 25 years, you know, you know what to do. I want you to go grab someone by the hand right now, and I want you to teach them how to pray. This is just a teaching moment. Walk. Walk with them. Just grab their hand and walk with them. Just grab their hand and walk with them. Stephanie, I know you've been in this thing a long time. Grab somebody's hand, please. I need you. Come here, champ. Come on, man. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. You're doing something. Bill, you've been in this thing. Go grab somebody's hand. Trina, Sean, go grab somebody's hand. Teach them how to pray. Father, we declare a decree right now. We come into agreement for our prodigals. We thank you, Father God, that they will live and not die. Father, I thank you that our friends that are lost, they're coming home in Jesus' name. Our family members, they're coming home in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that you are working right now as we speak. Satan, you are defeated. <laughs> oh, and I remind you where you come from. Oh, <laughs> Lord, my child will live and not die. She will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I thank you, Father God, right now that you are at work in her life. You are at work in the prodigal's life now. You at work right now, and Father, in those that are that are that are lost. I speak right now. I declare a decree right now that the, what the enemy meant for evil, God, you're turning it around for our good. You're turning it around. You're turning it around. You're turning it around. Hallelujah! 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 Father, we declare a decree that you are a good God. You're a good God. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You're working, God. You're working. You're working. And Lord, we send in the laborers. We send in the ministering spirits to go. And Father God, right now, from the highways and the byways and the hedges, that you're bringing them in. The lost are coming in. The wayward son and daughters are coming home. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I declare and decree it today. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. We take our ground. We take a stand. This is how we, this is how we fight our battles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The spirit of intercession has hit this place. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Have your way. Jesus. 
get weary in prayer don't get weary in intercession because every word you speak and declare heaven is getting behind it all of heaven's getting behind it and I know that as I'm praying right now I just sense a release why because I know I don't have to try to make it happen but I ha but God has to use me to pray it out I don't have to make it happen so the rest comes that I pray and then all of heaven is getting behind my prayer okay and that's where the rest comes that's because I'm not trying to make it and work it to come to pass no I declare and decree the word I speak the word then heaven gets behind my word it goes to work for me that's what's happening right now I sense it in my heart that all of heaven right now, he needed, you know, he, he, he needed someone to pray. He needed someone to stand in the gap to make up the hedge. He needed someone to go ahead and declare his word. He needed someone to go ahead and decree his word. See, and I'm not just satisfied just go through the religious motions, give you three points in a poem, and let's go home. No, but I really sense that the, when the Spirit of God landed on this service, he was saying, I got to find the people who will declare and decree my word for the lost. For the wayward. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it seems to be going on behind the scenes. There's, there's someone greater working on my behalf. Those that are for me are greater than those that are against me. We're going to sing one more song. And I just encourage you. That whatever you see yourself do in the spirit right here, to be obedient to do that. If this church is going to teach you to do anything, it's going to, it's going to teach you how to live by the spirit. I want you to be led by your spirit. Because when you're led by the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Some of you hesitated a while ago when I said 15, 20, 25 years. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna talk to you that have been married for that have been married. Yeah, you've been married to the king. I want to talk to you for just a minute. Those of you that have been in the faith for a little bit. The church needs you to rise up. church needs you to get a backbone and say this is how we're going to do it well I don't want to offend anybody no 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 please please offend me I, li I like what Laura says I'd rather be wildfire than no fire I'd rather have something that helps people get breakthrough than me just go through coming through these doors and just go through the motions and I'm speaking to you guys that are mature when you come into this house, you better be ready. It can't be on me. It can't be on Pastor Matt and, and Tanya and Abigail and, and, and some of the leadership around here. No, you've got to come in equipped. Because there's people right there on your very aisle that need a breakthrough. I did this today. Because you know that th this is a house of freedom. I did this today because you know that this is how we used to do it back in the day. Man, we needed breakthrough. Bless God, we're shutting everything down. We're gonna do. We're gonna march around the Jericho, man. We're gonna blow the trumpet in Zion, man. We're 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 gonna we're gonna 
we're going to pray until we get an answer. Those of you that are watching online, I just sense in my spirit, God's saying breakthroughs coming to your house. I pray, I pray against the spirit of lethargy. I pray against the spirit of fatigue. And I bind it and I break it now in the name of Jesus off your life. I bind it and break it now off your household, off your, off your physical body now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that there would be a strength to rise on the inside of you. In Jesus' name. No fear is allowed here. Amen. In Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. You know, this is what pastors do. They should do. They shouldn't allow you to stay in mediocrity or complacency. Should always be pu pushing you to go a little higher. Dig a little deeper. Okay? I love you. Those of you that have been in the faith for a while, I want to encourage you. I need you to step up. Okay? If you see someone that's struggling, don't wait for me to go to pray for them. You go pray for them. Don't wait for me to go lay hands on them. You lay hands on them. Amen. One more song, Fash. Hallelujah. Woo, what a sweet presence of the Lord. So we want to declare the last song. And as everything has happened this morning, it's a new song, but I expect that it's simple. Just declare it, that we're coming out as gold. Hallelujah. Is that okay? <laughs> Woo.
the Holy Ghost is ramping up and I believe there's a reason behind it is because it, there's a job to do it, it, it time is short church it, and it's you know we're, we're entering in the holiday season and, and it, we have a tendency to go oh, the holidays are here we can kick back and relax and and I think what the Holy Ghost is trying to say to us today is Now's not the time to shrink back. Now's the time to push a little, little further, a little faster. Uh, you're going to be around people that in this season that God's trying to get their attention and he's going to use you to do that. Okay? And, and so I encourage you to keep your, keep your tank filled up. Don't run on fumes. <laughs> 
Anybody ever run on fumes? <laughs> Lord, I, I was traveling to Fort Worth, and man, I just was just loving on Jesus. I, I didn't even check my fuel gauge. And I'm out there in the middle of nowhere. I look down, and my light beeps at me. I go, oh, no. I need a gas station soon. And I was, and it, you know, it got down, you know, 30 miles, 20 miles, and then it went dash, dash. Oh, exactly what I said. I went, oh, goodness. And I knew a town was coming up, and I needed to exit, and right there was the filling station. Thank God. I make sure that I, I was I was just having a good time. I don't I don't normally do that, but thank God for the filling station. And you know Sunday mornings are your filling station. Your devotions and your prayer times, those are filling stations. Make sure you're filled up so you can overflow. So you can do what God's called you to do. Amen. Stay filled up. Stay filled up. I'm, I'm going to finish a series called At the Table. And, and today's message is titled Making Room. Making Room at the Table. And I, I want us to go over. I mean, it's interesting how the service has gone so far. It's, it's kind of led me to a place where. You know, the Holy Ghost knows all things. And because he knows all things, he, he said, I'll lead and guide and direct you into all truth. So this message that I'm about to preach today doesn't surprise me the way the service has gone. Um, hang on. I got a message from a, a, a friend of mine who's watching the service right now in Belize. He said, Pastor, not sure who, what this is or who it's for, but wanted you to have it. 9 a.m. service during prayer. As I joined LHF online, and as you called for intercessors to start praying with someone, I went to praying in the Spirit. The Lord showed me, showed me many soldiers in a trench pushing long poles into a wall and erecting it. There were sandbags filling in the trenches behind the soldiers. We're preparing for battle. Wow. And I, and I appreciate you sending that in. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. So, you know, what, what's happening is God, God's doing something amazing. He's using us and people just like us, people just like you all over the world to stand in the gap. Do you know you're in a, you're, there's a war going on? Do you know we're in a war between good and evil, righteousness and unrighteousness, light and dark? I mean, we've become so politically correct that we've, you know, we, 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 don't, we kind of tiptoe around the tulips. We don't address the things that need to be addressed. And I've, I'm, I've fallen prey to that as well. But I'm telling you today, we have to stand. If we don't stand, who's going to stand? If we're not salt, if we're not light, who is going to be that? We're living in days where they said they, we, they would call good evil and evil good. We're living in those days. You recognize that, that scripture? And so I just, I just want to encourage you. There, there's a war going on, and what we did in intercessor prayer today and pressing in, uh, we're, we're, we're shifting the atmosphere. We're, we're shifting things, amen? Uh, turn in your Bibles, if you will, with me. We're going to go over to Luke chapter 15. And then from there, we're going to go to Luke chapter 19. Today, you can be confident that God is... God is going to abundantly be able to use the table, use your table to carry out his will, including reaching the lost. 
<laughs> so interesting how he does it. Luke chapter 15. I'm going to turn over there myself. <laughs> Now, in this, in this chapter of Scripture, verses 1 through 32, it's the parable that Jesus is teaching in parables. The first parable he teaches is the parable of the lost sheep, verse 1 of chapter 15 of Luke. Then all tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness to go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. <clears throat> and, when, and when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just, pers just persons who, who need no repentance. It's interesting that we're, <laughs> we're going this direction today. The next parable, the parable of the lost coin, Verse 8, or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Hallelujah. Verse 11, the next parable, the parable of the lost son. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, say that with me, when he came to himself. Say that one more time. Yeah, when he came to himself. When he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have, no, let me stop. When he came to himself, your prayer can affect the very time that he comes to himself. Your prayer can affect the very time that they come to themselves. Do you believe that? That's why we got to pray. That's why we got to continue to pray. That's why we got to continue to stay in our word, continue to, to be sensitive to the leadings and promptings of the Holy Ghost to pray. I love hearing Miss Stephanie's uh, stories about coming home from high school and mama be having some prayer services up in the house and, and miss stephanie tells it she tells it so wonderfully you ought to ask her about it and i may butcher up the story a little bit but she would tell her friends they they would all want to come in she would say no you stay right in the car <laughs> I've got to go get a few things and i'll be right back she'd go into the house and and everybody be slain in the spirit praying that's the kind of praying i'm talking about Intercession. That very prayer changes atmospheres for people's lives to come to themselves. Come on, somebody. 
But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And, and, and the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven. And in your sight, I'm, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on, his, put it on him, put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and this alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. He began to be merry. Now go on down to 32 because we, we know the story about the other brother coming in and was upset because he was like, I've been here all, all, all this whole time and, and you didn't throw me a party. <laughs> And I think that's the way some of us feel in the church. Well, I've been serving Jesus for 30 years. I haven't seen that. My God. And the Lord's saying, hey, your time's coming. The line's moving. Right? In verse 32, the Father says, it was right. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and it's found. It was right to be merry. It was right to kill the fatted calf. It was right to celebrate at the table. It's right. It's right. Anytime there's a victory, you should celebrate. Anytime there's a, 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 a breakthrough, you should celebrate. Do you understand the power of celebration? Do you understand the power of, of, of living in victory? Life. So in this passage, we've, we've seen from verse 1 all the way to 32 how, that, how, how there was a celebration of the lost sheep. There was a celebration of the lost coin. There was a celebration of the lost son. And, 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 and I want to take you to a thought I had. And it is these meals of celebration that they had were not to indulge, but to restore and reach out to those who were in great need, who were lost, but now are found. And it was like the meal sealed the deal. The meal was like, you were lost, but now you're found and we're celebrating. I like what this one writer said in his book. He said, the metaphor of a feast was common in Jewish picture. All right? And the fellowship of Jesus with his disciples and those who followed him is so under, is followed him is to be understood as an anticipation of the joy and fellowship of the kingdom. Jesus was fulfilling his messianic mission when he gathered sinners into fellowship with himself. All three of the parables that we just read, they emphasize the fact of joy at the recovery of the lost. Which leads me to my first point today. Every time we feast, we get a taste of the kingdom. Every time we feast, we get a taste of the kingdom. And I want you to know that the kingdom of God is going to be a glorious place. But we can have days of heaven on earth today. Amen? Amen? We can eat, we can drink, we can celebrate because we know that the lost are coming home. Come on, somebody. Often we want the benefits of food without the connection of the table. But I'm telling you, God uses the table to celebrate victory. 
to celebrate his goodness, to celebrate his plan for your life. Come on. Jesus delved into a place where the religious elite were unwilling to go. And as believers, you and I must ask ourselves if we're willing to participate in God's work beyond the comfort of neatly arranged place settings. We need to invite people into our lives, share a table and a story that might open a door to healing and restoration culturally and spiritually. How many Thanksgivings ago was it? I think it was three Thanksgivings ago. We had Botswana, Brazil, help me out. We had two from Brazil. We had Botswana, Africa. I had, then I had Kenny. Oh, oh man, I, I tell you what, it was, it was like, it was like the ethical house. <laughs> we, 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 we had every representation at the table. And I thought to myself, this is what the table should look like. It was fun. God is not hindered by imperfect houses or burnt toast. What people are craving isn't perfection. People aren't longing to be impressed. They're longing to feel like they're at home. Come on, somebody. If you create a space full of love and character and creativity and soul, I promise you, when you invite people into your home, they'll take off their shoes and curl up on the couch with gratitude and rest. No matter how small, no matter how undone, no matter how odd it may seem, because you obeyed and opened up the table and made room at the table, it can bring healing to people's lives. Amen. Now I want to take you over to Luke chapter 19. I was... This, this portion of the message, I've been meditating on it all week. This portion of what we're about to read has, has really helped me to see that Jesus is really desiring the lost. And we should desire to have them as well. Luke chapter 19, and I'm talking to you about making room at your table. Luke chapter 19, 1 through 10, I'm going to, leave, I'm going to read it out of a different translation, but go ahead and listen. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was. But on an account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, <clears throat> because Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down. And was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and, and said, He has gone to the guest of one who is a sinner? Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today, Salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. I like the way Jesus goes about this encounter. Jesus does not wait for the wealthy Zacchaeus to invite him to be a guest in his home. But Jesus says, I'm coming to your house. 
Jesus says, hey, buddy, peas and pongs, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> Whatever you got, I'm coming to the table. And, and, and doing so, Jesus blurs the lines that determine who is the host and who is going to be the guest. And he prevents himself from becoming indebted to Zacchaeus. Perhaps relieved that Jesus doesn't seem to despise him like everyone else does, Zacchaeus welcomes the rabbi into his home. And as is customary, the two certainly share a meal together. To not offer a meal to a house guest would be inhospitable and downright rude. As Jesus and Zacchaeus sit around a table breaking bread, the wealthy tax collector suddenly vows to give half of his possessions and to repay four times anyone whom he's defrauded. Which leads me to my next point. Jesus wants you to make room for him. Then I ask you this question. Are you making room for Jesus at your table? Many of you are going to sit around a table. You just go, you just get it. Get after, do you remember Jesus? Do you remember that Jesus wants to be a part of your life? So what in your life is keeping you from making room for the king? What in your life is causing you to not make room for the king? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, <clears throat> we are in a season of isolation. We are in a season where they, they said you can't meet, you can't do this. And bless God, I'm meeting and I am going to have turkey. I am going to have some ham. We're going to be wise. We're going to do things right. But ladies and gentlemen, I, I plan on not being silent when it comes to how good God's been in my life. I, I, I plan on not giving in to the culture of this age. I, I, I plan on loving on Jesus. I plan on letting him have place in my life 24-7. And you know, I, I, if I've missed it anywhere, I don't want to miss it here. I, I want Jesus to know he has full rule and reign in my home. So that means if I have to turn off the TV, turn the TV off. If I have to eliminate some activities, then I need to eliminate some activities in order to make room for Jesus. Now, now this is helping. This is here to help you identify if you're missing in any of these areas. Go ahead and stop it and make room for Jesus. Point number two, at the table there's an invitation to move from an acquaintance to a friendship. You know, when Jesus shows up, he just doesn't want you to have an encounter with him. He wants you to have an experience. Amen. Where you move from just casual, you know, I know your name. I think I know how about how old you are no 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 he, he a friendship anybody have any friends in here in order to have friends you know you got to show yourself friendly I'm lonely well won't you be a friend to somebody well I just don't have any friends show yourself friendly invite somebody over go get a coke go do something Go shopping. I don't know. But be friendly. I don't have any friends. Be friendly. I'm hitting some people right in the eyeballs with that one. <laughs> Mom, just be, be still. No one noticed you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. There were many religious that were upset that Jesus went to the tax collector's house. Also, Jesus 
to even sit down and eat a meal with Zacchaeus was very taboo. Jesus wasn't after food. Jesus was after the heart. Come on. Jesus isn't after food. Jesus is after your heart. The way Jesus moves many times is through compassion and mercy. The very act of eating a meal at Zacchaeus' home was a sign that there was a plan beyond the table. But the table led to the transformation. Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house. I'm going to eat at your table. Do you know that very act there? Jesus knew that that act at the table would lead to a life that was transformed. Amen. Just having a meal. Because God wasn't after food, God was after his heart. Point number th four. When you make room at the table for Jesus, your surroundings cannot help but be changed. You move from debt and busyness to gifts and hospitality. Zacchaeus was indebted, wasn't he? He was stealing, he was conniving, even the Romans didn't even trust him. The very people he worked for. There in Jericho, all the people that he was getting, you know, tax dollars from, they didn't even like him. But at the table, there's a transformation. At the table, <clears throat> at the table, Jesus began to change his surroundings. Because no one wanted to eat with the tax collector. He was the, he was the bad guy. Boo. But here Jesus, because he ate with the tax collector, the tax collector had a change of heart. When Zacchaeus promises Jesus that he'll make right his wrongs, Jesus declares, Zacchaeus, salvation has come to your house. And the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Which leads me to my last point today. Zacchaeus' life was changed because he opened up his home and made room at the table. It's very, it's very simple, but very profound. Zacchaeus' life was changed because he made room for Jesus at the table. Will you make room for Jesus at your table? You know, Friendsgiving is going on. And my encouragement for you is that you find someone that needs an impartation. You find someone that needs a little bit of hope restored. Invite them to your table. Because as you're inviting them to your table, what's going on? You just invited Jesus to your table. I want you to know how much I love you today. How thankful I am for you. Me and Tanya Jane, we want to wish y'all the the greatest happy Thanksgiving you've ever had. And in this season of turmoil and chaos, may you find the rest and peace and joy. May it overtake you. 
don't forget whose you are. Don't forget that God wants to work in you and through you in this season. And I prayed it as I was putting on my cologne every day. I'm going to put my cologne. I said, I'll anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in God's house forever. You could be an instrument of goodness and mercy. I love you so much. Let's all stand our feet. Father, I just thank you for our family. Thank you, Father, for our partners, our friends. I'm asking you, Lord, that in this season, that we would celebrate. We would celebrate that which you have you've brought back to life. And we wouldn't focus on the negative, but we would magnify all that you've done, the good. And Lord, we make room for you at our table. We love you so much. I'm thankful for you for never giving up on me, never giving up on my family. I love you so much, Father. Today may this body fill your love, the warmth of your grace, as they make room for you at their table. May joy flood their souls. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all said, amen, amen, hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated. Just a couple of quick things to finish. Was I the only person who was singing along while he read the scripture about Zacchaeus? He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord to see. Okay, I guess I was. All right. Uh, we want to thank you today for being with us. If you were watching online and the Lord ministered to you, or maybe you made a decision for Jesus today, would you just let us know? You can direct message us. You can email us. You can say something in the comments below. But we want to celebrate with you. We want to rejoice with you. Share the good news of what God is doing in your life. And anyone here, if there's something on your heart, if there's something you want to share about the goodness of God in your life, we invite you. Come tell us. Come to Pastor or Matt and Abigail. You can go back to the Connection Center talk to Miss Amy. Let someone know about the good things that God is doing in your life. I also want to remind you of a couple of quick things. Um, our church is hosting a virtual food drive. We've been talking about it, but I really want to press it today. What does this mean? In the past, you took a bag of brown paper sack and you went to the grocery store and you filled it with items and you brought it back here and then we took all of your bags, hundreds of pounds of food, and we took them to the Jubilee Center and we helped them with their annual uh, mid-month food uh, distribution for, the, for Thanksgiving. Well, because of COVID, we aren't able to give donations directly to those centers. So we're hosting a virtual food drop. But let me tell you, it's so much easier. You right there, while you're sitting there right now, can do your shopping, bring it to church, we get it, take it. Like all of that is done away with. You just go to the link on our website and I'm going to show you real quick. Let me get there. You go to our website and you scroll down until you see Bailey's beautiful face and you click on this little link and it takes you straight to the food drive and it says Lifehouse Fellowship Virtual Food Drive. We have set a goal of $500. We are 25% of the way there. If 20 people would go on and give a gift of $20, we would knock this out today. You might say, well, I don't have $20 to give. You can give a customized gift as low as $5, and you can go up to hundreds. And what it is, like, we bought food pantry boxes that were $20 a piece, and it has a mix of foods. You can just do a, a case of tuna fish. 
you can do. It has lots of different options for you to choose from. You might say, I don't even have $5 to do that. You can grab an envelope from the Connection Center, put a quarter, a nickel, a penny, something in it, and write food drive, and we'll make sure every dime that comes in that's designated for the food drive goes to West Texas Food Bank. And let me tell you, last month, I went to Casa de Amigos during a morning food distribution, and there were cars lined up through the parking lot, around the corner, around the block, to the next neighborhood. And people who were in line were coming to get food boxes from West Texas Food Bank. West Texas Food Bank supports the Jubilee Center. Casa de Amigos, a list goes on and on. It's not just the people who go to their center. They are supporting all through our community. So by supporting them, we're supporting many. So I want to encourage you, hop on the website, lifehousefellowship.net, look for Bailey's beautiful face, click the link, go to the food drive, make your donation. You could do it before you leave today. Some of you may only be able to do a dollar or less, but some of you can do more than $20, and we can knock that $500 goal out of the ballpark, okay? We can do this. We just need to all come together. I love a quote that says, I can't do everything, but I can do something. So let's reach out and bless our community. Amen. Let's all stand. Church, we love you. We're so thankful that you were with us today. We bless you. We pray the blood of Jesus over every one of you to protect you and keep you as you go on your way. Sickness and disease has no place in your home and your family in Jesus' name. Remember, great days are here and greater days are ahead. You can be done.